Hello and welcome to another episode of Progressive Doublery. I'm Stella, your host. Tonight's episode is a little personal and also very urgent. If you live in Wenatchee, Washington, I need your help to find a predator. I know what you must be thinking. A wig and heels, right? Wrong. And this story is exactly why blaming drag queens and the queer community for grooming is a deflection that only helps predators who target kids. This man was wearing a white shirt with a red, white, and blue American flag on it. Because the truth of the matter is, adults who target children don't want to stand out. They want to gain trust. And every single move that this man made was calculated, practiced, and absolutely planned out. You'll get a full description when I'm done talking about the actual thing that happened to my child. It's dangerous and it's damaging to blame an entire marginalized community instead of talking and preparing your child for what grooming actually is. It's extremely dangerous because it leaves your child vulnerable to the grooming of actual predators. So here's the story and how my kid had a brush two weeks ago and how you can help catch this asshat who targets children. So my kid, who I'm not going to name, walks by themselves to the pool during the summer for exercise. Part of learning responsibility and gaining a little freedom over time. We get them a punch card so they don't have to carry money around. They've done this without any issue for a couple of years now. They are regular at the pool and all the lifeguards and staff know who they are. On July 18th, they were doing exactly that. As they approached the building, a man waiting just outside the doors waved them inside ahead of him and said, you go ahead, and then turned around and followed them right in behind, offering to pay their way into the pool. My child, who we have told to never under any circumstances accept anything from a strange adult, declined. It helped that they already had a punch card too. So. They didn't actually need to pay, which they also explained. Over the next two hours, this man baited my child into conversation again and again about their interests like Roblox, Xbox, Minecraft, and many other things that are consistently topics children will engage in. Over time, he would ask my child to fetch him things like swim goggles, then offer to pay them rewards like soda which my child declined. At one point, this man told my child that they were certified in first aid and they had a few pairs of handcuffs and asked if they wanted to see them, pointing to a bright orange bag, indicating that he had them there at the pool with him. At every single point, my child made the right decision and said no. The thing is, My child, even though we had prepared them, still had no idea what was happening in the moment or that these are grooming behaviors because the part we focused on was touch. This man never touched him, but the behaviors were targeted to gain trust first. And here's the scariest part. As my child was leaving, this man tracked them down in the changing room and handed them a piece of paper with two usernames on them, one for Xbox and one for Roblox. Earlier, you see, when he'd asked if my child would send him a friend request, they explained that we monitor all of their accounts and that they aren't allowed to friend anyone outside of their age group, especially adults. Now this grown ass man, when my kid indicated again, that we would not allow them to be friends online. He said, don't tell them my age. Just tell them that you met a nice person at the pool. I'm friends with a 13 year old on there who doesn't think it's weird to be friends with me like other people do. My child walked home and the first thing out of their mouth was, hey mom, I met a really nice person at the pool. Now, my kid has been working on using gender neutral pronouns and language for a while, but something seemed off. 
So I asked a follow-up question, and this was the reason I even found out what happened. Person? Not kid? They smiled sheepishly and said, adult. This immediately had alarms going off in my head, but I didn't want to overthink it or scare them. So I asked a few more questions. At that point, not everything that I've just detailed now was actually laid out, so I planned to go with them to be safe the next time they went to the pool so I could have a conversation with this adult who thought it was appropriate to offer to pay for a child's admission and buy them soda. Two days later, I took the day off work. And as we prepped to go to the pool, I hung out with my kid while they played Minecraft. They started talking a bit more about their experience with this nice person. And that was when the information about the handcuffs and the usernames actually came out. At that point, I was really looking forward to meeting this man and got a description so I could talk to the manager of the pool about it as well. Once we were there, I had my kid go in and then I filed an incident report with the manager who found one of the lifeguards who had actually corroborated the description and everything that my kid said, right down to watching him as he looked for my child with a piece of paper in his hand at the end of the swim session. The lifeguard, understandably, because of this man's behavior, assumed that he was an uncle or some kind of relative and added the type of swim trunks the man was wearing and his approximate age. So here is the description. Overweight, cisgender, white man, balding, short brown hair, black prescription glasses, wearing a white shirt and a red and white blue American flag on it. Striped tropical swim trunks, early to mid 40s, somewhere between 5'7 and 5'10, bright orange bag, no visible tattoos. After letting my kid swim for a little while, we headed home and we called the police. The lifeguard was nice enough to give me their phone number so I could add it to the report. Unfortunately, or maybe fortunately for this man, he didn't come to the pool that day because I would more than likely have gotten arrested for assault. And I hope he's watching this video right now because it's on site for him. And if my kid ever points him out to me, it'll be an issue. When we got home, I sealed the paper with the usernames into a Ziploc bag and we handed everything off to Officer Fuller at the Wenatchee Police Department. I waited two weeks to make this video because I wanted to give the police a chance to do something. I mean, we handed them active usernames of a child predator. If he did this with my kid and he has a potential 13 year old victim already in his sights, then he's been doing this for years. This wasn't a one time thing. I mean, the way he waved my child in ahead of him and then came in behind him as if he were escorting my child to the pool is practiced. That is especially crafted for anyone watching who might be paying attention to give the lifeguards a false sense of security that this man knows my child from the very first moment. Targeting the child that went to the pool by themselves so that if, say, he gave this child a ride home or got them into his car, no one would question it. The man said he had handcuffs in his bright orange bag at the pool. We called last week to follow up, and according to the case notes, while it was handed off to a detective, the officer we talked to said nothing was going to happen unless we see the man again or someone else reports him. So they aren't using the usernames to track this man. I gave it one more week before making this video, hoping that the WPD would actually do something but there's been no word. In which case, I'm going to release the usernames to you all so you can make sure your child is not friends with a 40-year-old predator, aka a really nice person. And if they are, please, please contact the Wenatchee Police Department and reference incident number 23W12540. Meets like this are always the first step then it's offering to buy things they aren't supposed to have. It will start with candy, soda, Robux, Xbox cards, and toys, then move to candy-flavored vapes, 
overly sweet alcohol and drugs, anything to get your child dependent on them, trusting them all the while physical touch is getting more and more frequent. Because now your child will feel the shame of not wanting to tell you they are getting things they aren't supposed to have. And the secrets have piled up and they feel like they will get in trouble. So they hide the abuse because they think it's their fault. This is a picture of the paper with the usernames. Notice how the handwriting is really bad. That was also more than likely intentional in order to pass the child vibe check in case we found the note. Write them down and check your child's friends list on Xbox and Roblox. Parents, please make sure you're talking to your children about these kinds of red flag behaviors. This can happen to anyone. And blaming the queer community is just making it easier for the predators. It's what they want. They want a shield so that they can come for your children with a smile wearing an American flag t-shirt. The truth is, it's a lot harder to see the person standing in front of you when you're focused on the flashy headlines and the people that stand out from the crowd. Please stop and have a real conversation with your kid. Be safe, Wenatchee, because there is a predator among us.